And the final lesson that I've learned is in terms of plants that are supposedly evergreen. And I've learned not to worry when they drop the leaves. So for example, I've got this Brugmansia here. And it's not supposedly a plant that does drop its leaves. However, I've found that come this time of year, well, earlier than this, like November, December time, it will eventually drop all its leaves. And I've learned not to worry about that. I've also learned to water as to the amount of growth that it's actually putting on at the time. So even if it's usually an evergreen plant, if it's usually a plant that you think of as tropical and constantly growing, they can kind of revert to acting as if they're deciduous given the right conditions. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's cause for panic. As you can see, this is coming out with some nice new leaves again now. Um, I actually wasn't that worried about the fact that it had dropped leaves this time round because they are definitely a uh, martyr to spider mite. And spider mite is one of the, for me anyway, it's one of my worst pests in terms of I find it really difficult to spot them. I know that they're there, but I only know that they're there usually when it's too late and they're all absolutely infested with them. This particular one, as soon as it does go outside, that seems to completely solve the spider mite problem. Doesn't need spraying, doesn't need anything. Just the general humidity and being outside, for some reason, seems to prevent them from getting spider mites. Maybe, maybe it's other bugs that gets, uh, gets rid of them, I don't know. But that's not had a water up until now. These leaves have started to grow, so I've now given it a water. But I will hold off on that because I don't think there's really much cause for me to give it any more water now. That's going to stay really moist for quite a long time. And we'll just move round to the Bougainvillea. Mentioned this before, had a great big panic over this uh, a couple of years ago because it lost all its leaves and when I looked it up it said that it was an evergreen plant but really all you should do is just give a little scratch with your nail there and if it's still green underneath as you can see it is there if I just zoom in on it that means that it's absolutely fine it's just having a rest and in fact somebody from Spain actually said to me that theirs even lose their leaves over winter not for very long, only for perhaps a few weeks, but over here, obviously this one's been like this for a month or two now. But I'm confident it'll come back. I've given it a little water, but that's it now. I'm not going to give it any more water until I see some movement. But I'm hoping that that will too also come back. So yeah, the lesson there is that even if you're told that it's an evergreen plant, that it may well lose its leaves given the conditions. See, I thought it might not do because of the light. I've got grow lights, heating it to a certain temperature, but they, they just know, you know, the, the grow lights, unless you've got them right close up to the plant, they're just, they're never gonna replace the, the light from the sun. I know that as soon as the sun comes out in this country, the, grow, the light from the grow lights vanishes, it disappears, it's completely blitzed by the intensity of the light from the sun. Same thing with Drosera. Any kind of sundews, they might be tropical, subtropical sundews, you'll find that they can die down. You'll also find that they can continue surviving because this Drosera capensis, uh, well, it's actually a bunch of Drosera capensis over here. This can die down, and indeed it did for the first couple of years that I had it, but it's got to a size now where it's fine. It survives at 12 degrees Celsius, and it actually thrives at 12 degrees Celsius until the temperatures get a bit warmer. But yeah, I've had another one over here. This one is actually, I think I said it was a temperate one in one of my last videos. It's not. It's actually a subtropical one, but that's another example there. It really didn't mind dying down for a little bit and now it's coming back strongly. So yeah, one of the lessons there is don't panic too much if some of your tropical plants or house plants just can't cope with the depths of winter. They may well come back strongly. You've just got to hold off on the watering, hold your nerve and they can very often come back again for you. So while we're talking about pests, this is the last little bit of my learnings. So what have I had in here? Well, obviously it's a greenhouse and the worst time for me is actually in summer, not in winter. Winter's not so bad because it's all shut up in winter and anything that I get, uh, it, as long as I get rid of that particular pest, that's it, that's the end of it. However, once summer comes, I've got the doors open, I've got all the vents open, I've got the louvre windows open. So it's a constant battle because they're coming in all the time. 
Um, I have thought quite seriously about using organic methods. And by that, I don't just mean things like soft soap. I mean things like predatory insects or predatory bugs to try and uh, oh, like reduce the populations. But the only difficulty with that is that it takes time to get up some kind of balance and it means living with some bugs for a while. And unfortunately, these plants are just so expensive and so precious to me that in the end, I kind of backed off that a little and I must admit I have been uh, using other means, other methods to control them. So let's have a look at what I've had. So green fly, they're an easy one to get rid of. They're also an easy one to spot. I actually had some green fly over on this fuchsia delta sera. This one is, that one's just going over a little bit, but it's got plenty of buds on it. Um, and this begonia fuchsioides as well, because they're both quite close together. Uh, I mean, obviously, you can get green fly on all sorts of plants. you just got to keep an eye out for them. But they're very easy to get rid of with organic means. So I don't always resort to systemics for that. Um, so that's green fly. I've also had white fly. White fly are quite easy to get rid of if you use these yellow traps. Can you see the yellow trap down there? Um, just hang those between the plants and that does tend to get rid of them for you. Uh, I've had slugs. Slugs, for some reason, always seem to find a way in. Even though I've been through this greenhouse like really carefully and tried to seal everything up, they still find a way in. I think perhaps some of these that are in pots, like for example this uh, Abyssinian banana here, which is overwintered in here. Obviously, it's going to be out all year, so you don't know what amount of slug eggs you've got in there that then hatch out. So that's something to think about. Again, I, I do have some slug pellets. I use like an organic slug pellet for that. That does seem to get rid of them. So that's something that's easily solvable, especially if you come in here on a night, you can usually catch them if you walk around and have a good look with a torch. Scale insects I've had, not as easy to spot, but you know, I can spot them. They're, they're, they're okay, I can find them. Uh, vine weevils, you tend to find vine weevils gravitate to things with like a, a fine compost. They don't tend to be bothered with like the erry compost that you get in orchids. So things like cyclamen, things like streptocarpus will get vine weevil in them, especially if they're low down. So they are quite low flying insects and they come in and they lie their eggs in the compost of your streptocarpus and the first thing you know about it is when the leaves all wilt and it flops. Now the thing about streptocarpus is it's so easy to reroute. so once you've treated it you can reroute them. I must admit I tend to just throw them out because I've got that many multiple plants of the different uh, cultivars and the different hybrids. So that's vine weevil tarsonomy mite. I've had a few videos on this one. Quite recently had tarsonomy mite here but it's still got a bloom up for me there. And um, look, it's got another one there, and that one's slightly different. Can you see? That's in the same plant, slightly different colour. Um, it, it does change as it ages, but uh, it does cause mutations as well. So that's not put quite as good a show this year. The only way to get rid of tarsonomy it might really is to spray it with a systemic. You can try it with a non-systemic, but uh, it, the, the systemic does have an effect, unfortunately, a bad effect. Uh, but you know you've got to make your own mind up there whether you want to lose the plant or not i believe that a lot of the growers tend not to use the systemics on cyclamen because they've got such big greenhouses that they can actually use biological controls um, so you may well get a plant that arrives with tarsonamid mite i don't think they just go to cyclamen they don't they'll go on to all sorts of plants but fortunately i only seem to have been troubled with them on cyclamen and on streptocarpus as well unfortunately and we've already mentioned spider mites so yeah that's probably one of the ones that i struggle with the most because I, I find it difficult to see it i have had it on the banana and um, but again it doesn't seem to have been troubled with it this year fortunately touch wood i'm just touching my head no spider mite as yet that's something that i have to keep an eye out for so there's just a few things i've not gone through absolutely anything but they are uh, a lot of the main things that are about plants that I've saved and what I've learned from it. No doubt I've missed some out. No doubt I've forgotten about certain things. It's surprising how many things you just take for granted when you've actually been doing it a while and you think, yeah, well, that's the way you care for that and you just keep doing it as a kind of automatic, like an automatic pilot. 
there are lots of plants that I've lost as well, which no doubt I'll make another video on at some point. Not as easy to show those because they are on the compost heap. So I hope you found that useful, some little bits of it useful. I hope some of it is something that people related to. Please put in the comments any of your questions or any of your comments on things that we've talked about. And for now, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.